and you'll find all of the words for our readings, prayers, and music on screen so you can follow along. Uh, I would love it if you could like this video or comment on it so that we know who is joining us this morning. If you happen to have a candle handy, I would invite you to light it now as I light mine. Lighting a candle is a small ritual that can help us set aside time and space as holy and reminds us that the light of Christ will never be extinguished. So I would like to invite Carol up to tell us something about Thanksgiving. And good morning. <laughs> All righty. This Thanksgiving, the children in CE will be discussing the difference between being thankful in our conversations and being truly grateful for people and things in our lives. What is the difference, you ask? Well, Thanksgiving is when a friend gives you a gift and you graciously say thank you. But you're truly grateful for their friendship, which is a deeper and long <clears throat> longer-lasting feeling. Or you thank your neighbor for shoveling your driveway, but are grateful for living in a community where people take care of each other. It's appreciation that goes beyond a thank you. Thankfulness is a quick emotional result, which is much appreciated. Gratefulness is a long-term awareness of the good people and things we live and have in our lives. So we would like to have you join us in creating a Thanksgiving grateful chain. There are colored strips of paper, different colors, out in the narthex, ready for you to write your thankfulness or your, your grateful comments on them. And we will be making a chain, and we've already started it. I'd like you to add to our chain, and we'll see how long of a thankfulness and gratitude chain we can make for the Thanksgiving season. So that is your homework today. When you get done, we will be making the chains. And just a quick reminder, the next week is a week to bring in all your aluminum pop tabs for the Ronald McDonald House. They will be delivered. The, the Ohio State and Michigan game is, of course, the Saturday after Thanksgiving. And that is when they weigh them all and see which team has the most weight in aluminum tabs. So we might beat them on the field and off the field. Let's hope. Go Blue. Gee, I actually had a prop for that announcement. Uh, mine are mostly, almost entirely uh, cat food, canned tabs, because we go through a lot more cat food than pop in my household. Uh, but we are um, officially collecting and turning them in next week, although, of course, you can bring them in any time in the year. And I even made a fancy new poster that's in Fellowship Hall with a uh, bag underneath, so you could drop one off if you happen to, say, have one in your pocket. It is for a good cause. Uh, so please join me in our opening prayer from Isaiah 65. God is about to create new heavens and a new earth. All cities shall be a joy, and all people shall be a delight. We shall build houses and inhabit them. We shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. We praise our God who built the earth and who holds up the foundations of the universe. Amen. We are imperfect. God calls us to be bold, but we seek comfort. God calls us to love others, but we put ourselves first. God calls us to care more deeply, but we, cho we choose to be numb. Let us be honest with God and each other as we speak our shortcomings plainly, knowing that our Creator hears us and will not turn away. Please join me in our uniform, unison prayer of confession, followed by a time for silent personal confession. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, upon whom we build our life, forgive us our sins. We are prone to folly, boasting in our success, dreaming selfish dreams, taking credit and blame when neither is due us. 
Give us humble hearts, O Lord, admitting that all our good works depend on your grace in the end. Help us do our part and give the rest to you. We pray in the name of Christ, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Beloved, we do not have to be perfect. Christ's love and God's grace covers us. All God asks is that we love the Lord. This love changes us. It defines us. In Jesus Christ, know that you are forgiven and your slate is wiped clean. Please pray with me. God, your word is a gift. Thank you for blessing us with these stories of faith and failure and redemption. May we find truth in them. Holy Spirit, we know that you are in this room with us today. Please help us to hear the message you have for us today that we may go out from here and help to bring about God's kingdom in our lives. Amen. 
Our gospel reading this morning comes to us from Luke, chapter 6, verses 20 through 31. Hear now the word of the Lord. Then Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when People hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice on that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what our ancestors did to their false prophets. But I say to you that, listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who slander you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other one also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, Do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. I don't usually wear a pin with my stole. My remembrance poppy keeps getting covered up by my stole. So today we come to the end of our stewardship season. Or rather, today we come to the end of our worship series specifically focusing on stewardship. But if we define stewardship as the act of protecting something that is worth preserving, then stewardship is something we need to dedicate ourselves to not just for a season, but all year long for our whole lives. If something is worth preserving, then we should feel called to make sure that it is always protected, not just sometimes. This year we have an overarching theme of legacy, which is something that is passed down from one generation to another, a set of values more than just a physical object. We've been looking at five different passages of scripture, two from the Hebrew Bible, two from the Gospels, and today's from the letter of Paul. Each one is a way that we can reflect on legacy and stewardship. We began with Moses and the way he devoted his life to helping the Israelites reach the promised land, even though he knew that he himself would never reach it. We read about Ruth, who chose to devote herself to her mother-in-law, even in the midst of poverty, hunger, and grief. We read about the Samaritan woman at the well, and how her response to meeting Jesus was to run and tell everyone. Last week, we read about a woman whom Jesus told us would be remembered for something she had done, and we wondered how we ourselves will be remembered. Throughout our worship series, we've been using a prayer of dedication about planting and building that was written by Ken Untener in the 1970s when he was the bishop of the Diocese of Saginaw, Michigan. It draws on imagery from today's reading and inspired some of the framing of our worship series, which was outlined by my colleague and Facebook friend, Carol Holbrook Prickett, who serves a Presbyterian church in Kentucky. So before I read our second scripture this morning, I wanted to repeat the closing lines of the prayer. We may never see the end results, but that is the difference between the master builder and the worker. We are workers, not master builders, ministers, not messiahs. We are prophets of a future, not our own. Amen. Our second reading this morning comes to us from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 3, verses 1 through 15. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And so, brothers and sisters, I could not speak to you as spiritual people, but rather as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, 
not solid food, for you were not ready for solid food. Even now you are still not ready, for you are still of the flesh. For as long as there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not of the flesh, and behaving according to human inclinations? For when one says, I belong to Paul, and another, I belong to Apollos, are you not merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you came to believe, as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. The one who plants and the one who waters have a common purpose, and each will receive wages according to the labor of each. For we are God's servants, working together. You are God's field, God's building. According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation and someone else is building on it. Each builder must choose with care how to build on it. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one that has been laid. That foundation is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, the work of each builder will become visible, for the day will disclose it, because it will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test what sort of work each has done. If what has been built on the foundation survives, the builder will receive a reward. If the work is burned, the builder will suffer loss. The builder will be saved, but only as through fire. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Paul suggests that we are like builders, constructing something on top of the foundation that is Jesus Christ. If there are spaces that need to be cleared, I'm good at that. If there are walls, I can paint them. If there's furniture to be assembled, Toss me the instructions and I'll get started. Are these the most helpful skills when it comes to constructing a building? Probably not, but I'd still do what I could. There are plumbers and there are electricians, but if they can't work together, there are going to be problems and they might be shocking. Thank you. <laughs> There have been times when I have moved couches, tables, the baptismal font, uh, the big cross that's currently in the lounge, even, I will have you know, the piano, all by myself. But there have also been times when someone else gave me a hand in moving any of these objects, and it's weird how the process went so much faster. Our church was founded in 1878, but the congregation didn't meet at this address. The original building burned down in 1951. I can't imagine what I would do if I were the pastor of a church that had just burned down. I mean, I'm pretty sure that there would be a lot of shouting and swear words, hopefully when I was by myself. But this congregation was able to see past the anger and grief and shouting that they must have felt, able to come together to make new plans and adapt as needed. They came together and they built this sanctuary where they were already worshiping just two years after the fire. And they didn't stop there. The congregation recognized a need to not only worship together, but also to learn together and to create opportunities for meetings and conversations. So they came together and picked up their tools again and added on to their building, creating our lounge, my study, and the front office. And they didn't stop there. The congregation recognized a need to not only worship and learn together, but also to celebrate and eat together. So they came together and picked up their tools again and tore down the original fellowship hall, creating the one that we have now. That was in the mid-1980s, incidentally, which means that almost everything in the church kitchen is older than I am. But that also means that this congregation took the time and care to pick appliances that would last for literal generations. 
This congregation wanted more than just, for example, a coffee maker. They wanted a legacy of people who would come after them and who would also deepen their relationships with each other while drinking coffee. And they didn't stop there. The congregation recognized a need to not only worship and learn and celebrate together, but also a need to teach their children about God and a need to have a space to remember and visit the saints who have gone before us. So they came together and picked up their tools again and added on to their building, creating our CE classroom, our chapel with its columbarium wall and our columbarium garden. And they didn't stop there. The congregation recognized a need to not only worship and learn and celebrate and teach and grieve together, but also to reach out to their community together. So they came together and picked up their tools and formed relationships with other churches, with local schools, with Aiden Milan, with scout troops and mission clusters, with book clubs, with musicians, with families, with nonprofit groups, with pharmacies, with people who had been hurt by other churches, with artists, with firefighters, with students, with friends, with youth groups, with people new to the area, with neighbors, and with so many more. We read God's words in Isaiah. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. All peoples, plural, joining together separate groups of people who identify themselves by some background or interest or quality. All peoples, plural, because it would be hard to build a house of prayer if every person involved in its construction had exactly the same skills. All peoples, plural, because God looks at us and sees us for all that we are and loves us anyway, and loves our differences and our dreams and our various ways of expressing our love. All peoples, plural, because God made the earth and sea and sky and everything in between and everything that breathes with life and every person who has ever lived. All peoples, plural, because when we come together with our differences of opinion and with our individual quirks and with our particular skills, we can get so much more done than any one people or any one person could do alone. And God didn't stop there. God loved us and spoke to us and guided us through the words of the prophets. God held us close and listened to us and offered back hope and grace. God gave us Jesus Christ, not once at birth, but twice at his resurrection, and a third time when he will come again. And God didn't stop there. God continued to inspire us through the Holy Spirit and continues to inspire us still. God's house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples, but that house is still being built, and we are its builders. And God won't stop there. What needs do we recognize now in our world, in our nation, in our community, in our church, in our families of choice and origin, in our relationships, in ourselves? How can we come together and pick up the tools to address those needs? In the grand scheme of time, even in the 2,000-year history of the church, People's Presbyterian Church has only existed for a short time. What is 140-some years when some churches have been standing for a thousand or more? And yet, People's Presbyterian Church has made a real impact on more lives than we could count because her congregation chose to keep their eyes open for the needs around them and were ready to pick up their tools to continue building not just our literal church structure, but everything that is our legacy. We are still building, you and me and all of us together. What should we build next? We may never see the end results, but that is the difference between the master builder and the worker. 
We are workers, not master builders, ministers, not messiahs. We are prophets of a future, not our own. Amen. Please pray with me. When we pray together, we multiply our joys and divide our sorrows. Kind creator, in the face of a world that feels on the brink of chaos, we take this opportunity to speak our gratitude that you know us and call us by name, even if it wasn't the name we were given at birth. In you, we find comfort. In you, we find meaning. We cling to your promise that there is a day coming when there will be no more tears, when we will not labor in vain. We also recognize that through the Holy Spirit, we are called to work alongside you to bring about this new reality. And so we pray for the world, not as it will be, but for what it is now. We pray for those with the power to make decisions that affect others. We pray for those who lead us now and for those who were elected to office on Tuesday. Surround them with wise people. We ask that you protect their compassion and love of justice. May it outweigh any other factor in their decision process. We also pray for the political divisions in America. Help us to balance in our hearts and minds, loving those who are different from us and fighting for what we believe is right. 
May all our actions be motivated by your Holy Spirit. We pray for the people of Ukraine who don't have enough power to heat their country as they head into the cold months. We pray for the people of Russia who are not being told the truth. We pray for the people of Uganda who are fighting an outbreak of the Ebola virus. We pray for the people of South Korea who mourn those who died in the Halloween stampede in Seoul. We pray for peaceful transitions of power in Israel and Brazil and around the world. God, we pray specifically for this community and for those whom we know and love. Comfort those who are sick and those who are grieving. Encourage those who are healing and those who are going through hard changes. Wrap your arms around us when we receive bad news. Keep us safe in travels. Help us to keep building on the foundation that is Jesus Christ because your house will be called a house of prayer for all peoples, and that house will be a legacy worth protecting and worth preserving. Remind us to be thankful for those who stood up and left their homes behind to defend what they believed in and to protect the ones they loved. As the days grow shorter, show us your light, God. Help us to see the life, love, beauty, and kindness that we encounter on a daily basis. May we cling to the hope you offer, remembering and rehearsing the history of our faith, which has been passed down by God's grace from generation to generation. We entrust our prayers to you, remembering the saints who have come before us and the love of Jesus Christ that empowers us. It is in Jesus' name that we pray in the way we were taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. I was asked to finish up the um, stewardship campaign here with just a recap of what's happened over the last few weeks. And first I want to start out with talking about the pledge cards that all of you should have received. Please fill those out. Uh, we're hoping that you're turning them in today with the collection. Uh, if you received it, don't just throw it out and think, well, I've already filled one out in the previous years. We'll continue on. We need a new one every year. So please complete that. If you don't have the card anymore, see myself or Chris, we'll get you a new one. Now, the last few Sundays, the theme of the worship service has been legacy. Chris has talked about the people that came before us to build People's Presbyterian Church and how they work to build a legacy that survives today the buildings and grounds, the fellowship that we share, the worship that we follow, the service to our community that we continue are all part of the legacy we inherited. As was pointed out, this continues to happen because of God's grace and our giving. We have supported many special fundraising projects over the years, and we thank you for your support of those. Each one of us needs to consider what we can do to further the legacy of peoples. Now, I am asking you to consider the costs of the church as stated in our budget each year. This year, 
Chris has figured that, uh, one, we have cut the budget back to bare bones, but he has figured also that we are going to come up somewhere around $15,000 short of covering our expenses. Now, we have some reserves that we're going to be able to cover that shortfall this year. However, we need your help to continue to provide uh, for the worship, worship and facilities that we all enjoy. A place to come and share God's word, a place to learn, a place to share the ups and downs of our lives, a place to bring family and friends. Are we going to continue our tradition of being a force in our community? Will we continue to keep our facilities in good repair? Will we continue to be able to provide various mission works in God's name? We will continue to be able to grow, I'm sorry, will we be able to continue to be able to grow in our faith with worship services that challenge us and teach us? The decision is ours. Do we support the activities of peoples? Are we doing all that we can do with our talents and our dollars? What will be our legacy? What will be your legacy? Thank you. Thank you, Ken. The church has a strong foundation in Jesus Christ, and we are called to build upon that foundation. In our outreach, in our mission projects, in our involvement within our community, in the good news that we share, we are constantly building and strengthening the walls of the church so that it can stand for generations to come, so that it can shine with warm light, so that our doors can be held wide open to invite all people inside. God loves all people, no exceptions, and People's Presbyterian Church exists so that we can encourage each other to love God like God loves us. If you are able, please place your offerings and pledge cards in the plates being passed. Alternatively, if you visit peoplespresbyterian.org, you'll find a donate button at the top of that page that will link you directly to a secure page where you could make a donation online. We appreciate the generation of the people's family as we live out our faith in mission and ministry.
It helps now and then to step back and take the long view. The kingdom is not only beyond our efforts, it is even beyond our vision. We accomplish in our lifetime only a fraction of the magnificent enterprise that is God's work. We plant the seeds that one day will grow. We water the seeds already planted, knowing they hold future promise. We lay foundations that will need further development. We provide yeast that produces effects far beyond our capabilities. It may be incomplete, but it is a beginning, a step along the way, an opportunity for the Lord's grace to enter and do the rest. We may, may never see the end results, but that is the difference between the master builder and the worker. We are workers, not master builders. Ministers, not messiahs. We are prophets of a future, not our own. Amen. Please join with me in reading our affirmation of faith from the Confession of 1967. The life, death, and resurrection and promised return of Jesus Christ have set the pattern for the church's mission. His life as a man involves the church in the common life of all people. His service to all people commits the church to work for every form of human well-being. His suffering makes the church sensitive to the sufferings of all humankind. We see the face of Christ in the faces of people in every kind of need. In the power of the risen Christ and the hope of his coming, we see the promise of restoration of all that is broken and of God's victory over all wrong.
So as we sit this morning and as we go out into the week, I encourage you to turn in your pledge card if you haven't already and to think about what tools you pick up when we all come together to continue building our legacy, the church that stands on one foundation, Jesus Christ our Lord. So I would like to remind you again to bring your pop tabs in for next week or cat food tabs or uh, canned pineapple tabs or, or whatever comes up in your household. Uh, I would also love to encourage you uh, to come to our adult ed after worship in the lounge. We are going to start drafting our new uh, mission and invitation statement. We've been looking at statements from other churches and talking about what is important to include. And so we've got a whole word bank of uh, words that we liked in other statements that we will be putting together today. So friends, find the needs around you and pick up your tools because we are building on the foundation that is Jesus Christ. God's house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. And that house is the legacy that we are called to preserve and protect. May God bless you and keep you, be kind and gracious to you. May God's face shine upon you and give you peace. And from wherever you are, serve the Lord, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. 